Hi everyone, I'm Sonia and welcome to my channel. This is my first video and I will be doing a review of my Mansur Gabriel Large Tote. I bought this bag about 6-7 to seven months ago from the Bergdorf Goodman website and at that time I was looking for a new work tote. I really needed something that was functional, chic as well as understated enough to bring to the workplace and I felt that Mansur Gabriel was the right brand because they had very slick lines and a simple design that was suitable for what I needed. I will first do an overview of the bag and then tell you what I like and what I don't really like about this bag. When you purchase from Bergdorf Goodman, you will receive a large silver box which I don't have with me right now because I left it in my old place. Inside of that, you will receive this large dust bag which is cream coloured with some pink lettering in front, which is in the burlap material. Inside of that, you'll get the bag here. This is the black large tote in the vegetable tan leather, which means that there is minimal processing. This is in a smooth matte finish, and there is a bright red interior, also known as the firma colour, which is a coated leather inside. The bag measures about 15.5 inches across, 11.5 inches in height, 6 inches in depth, and the handle drop is about 9 inches from top to bottom, which means that it is quite suitable for putting over the shoulder. Some close-ups of the bag you can see that the lines are really simple. There is a small logo in front in gold foil lettering that says Nancy Gavrel. The back of the bag is plain. This is the side with stitching down the middle and the bottom and there are no feet on this bag. Moving on to the interior. The bag is a large hole and there are no pockets or any compartments. Here, you can see that there is a white tag and it says made in Italy. Although this bag is based in, or rather this brand is based in the US, their bags are all made in Italy. There is a pouch that is detachable, which you've seen, which measures about 8 inches across and 5.5 inches in height. It's a very thin pouch and there is no depth to speak of, so don't expect to fit too much inside of this small pouch. There is a zip in gold hardware on the top and the interior is in the red leather that is similar to the interior of the bag. Now you've seen the bag, I will tell you what I like and don't really like about this bag. Firstly, I'll tell you what I really like about this bag. Number one, I love the design. It's really simple and there are hardly any frills with this bag. The logo is very subtle as well and that makes this bag very versatile. It goes with all outfits and it is appropriate for multiple settings such as work, play as well as school. Number two, I love the size of this bag. As you can see, it is huge. It can fit your MacBook 13 inch. I have not tried the 15. Um, it can fit your iPad Air, your water bottle, lunchbox, cardigan, shawl, kitchen sink, maybe. Number three, this bag is really light. According to the Bergdorf Goodman website, it weighs one pound which translates to 450 grams. That is slightly lighter than what I eat for lunch. So this means that if even if you are fitting tons of things inside this bag, you will not be expecting this bag to contribute too much to the weight. That's really important. Going on to what I don't really like about this bag. First thing is the leather. This is the vegetable tanned leather that I picked and you can see, even from a distance, 
that there are some scratches around here that are pretty superficial. Some are slightly deeper. Behind, you can see some major scratches here and here. This is the characteristic of this bag and I knew that this was going to happen with this bag going in but I did not realise how quickly and how easily that it would be scratched. It is black in colour so it is not that obvious. I have seen some pictures of the same bag in the same material but in a lighter colour like brandy or carmelo which really show their age even though they are not really old or poorly taken care of. Okay. However, these scratches will fade with time as the bag rubs against your body when you carry it. But at the same time, you know these scratches, or rather new scratches, will form over time as well. If you can see over here, there is quite a deep crease. And this is because I tend to hold my bag this way. I push the bag behind me and the bag will sometimes deform this way. Can you see that? Yeah, so the crease forms and the area of the crease will look duller than the other parts around it. This is the front. Let me show you the back. It's a bit difficult to see but this is the area which tends to rub against my body as I move and this part is slightly shinier than the rest. Okay, it's not really very obvious unless you're staring, which I kind of do. I tend to stare at my bags all the time and it can get a bit annoying if you're the type of person that requires your bags to look perfect all the time. However, if you're the sort of person who likes your bags to age with you and have sort of a charm as it becomes more vintage with you, then this is the right bag for you. Secondly, this pouch is good and bad. The good thing is that you can take it out and go from day to night for drinks or clubbing or anything like that. But as I said before, this bag is, or rather this pouch is really small. Okay, let me show you what I can fit inside here, which is not much. This is my phone, it is my Samsung S6 Edge. This will fit very comfortably inside, but even then, if you may just trust me, it forms a mark already. And that is from a really thin object. This is my wallet, which is a Prada regular sized wallet. I use this all day, every day. I don't change out my wallets and I'm too lazy to do so. So I tend to stuff this inside as well. It's possible. Let me show you that it's possible. See? It fits. And if you use some force, not a lot, but a little, you see that it closes, but it deforms the pouch quite a bit. It comes wavy here. And it doesn't really look very good, I think. Okay. Also, if you're the sort like me, I tend to do groceries with this combination as well. That's not a good thing because when you're at the till, you're here trying to get your money and then you're trying to get the coins, your loyalty card, and then you're trying to stuff everything back into your into this and into this. And let's not let's be real, you will have your car keys and your lipstick inside as well. And these things will happen if there's a problem, things fall on the floor, I want to get on with life, but I can't. Okay, so my advice is that try not to be lazy like me, switch out of the regular sized wallet, bring a card holder, one lipstick, no other things, and maybe one or two keys and that's it. Also, this is made of the same leather and will show the same wear and tear as the bag itself. You must become comfortable with that. So if you leave this on the club floor, it will get destroyed. 
Thirdly, I'm not sure if I mentioned this, but there is no authenticity, authenticity, I can't say this, authenticity card that comes with this bag. Like I said, there is a small tag that says made in Italy, but you don't get a date stamp, you don't get a label or a card itself. What comes with the bag are these, a care card, a tag, I have this other tag, as well as my receipt. What this means is that if you buy on the second-hand market, I think you really do have to have the original receipt to truly prove that this is an authentic bag. With no authenticity label or card, it can be easily replicated on the black market and trust me, I've seen them. I've seen some girls walking on the roads with bags that look like Manzo Gabriel but are not. They are so ex inspired, not expired, inspired by this design that I can't tell from a distance. Would this reduce the value of the bag in future? We'll see. Hopefully Manzo Gabriel will come up with some form of authenticity uh, card or tag to come with this bag. Lastly is a security issue with this bag. I went in with the knowledge that this is an open tote. If you would like maximum security, then a zip tote with a lock would be perfect. But I really like the design of this bag, so I bought this. This bag is not suitable for going into crowded places, particularly going for traveling in places that are not so safe because it's really open. I can put my hand in and out and grab whatever I want. There are several ways to circumvent this problem, such as putting a shawl over your items or putting your items in the pouch. And uh, lastly, my tip is to get a bag organizer. This organizer is from a website that actually makes bag organizers for the Louis Vuitton Neverfull as well as the Speedy. But I bought it anyway because the colour matches the interior. What's important about this is that there is a zip top. So you can use this to put all your valuables and there are so many compartments inside. Zip it out and then you're good to go. If someone really wants to take this bag thinking that there will be valuables inside, trust me, you will be able to feel that weight off your shoulders, so don't worry. Okay, as for the price of this bag, I bought this bag from the Bergdorf Goodman website. Uh, at the time, I paid about 585 US dollars. Currently, I think the price is quite similar since then. There has not been any major increases in price for this model. Although I can't say the same about their more popular models like the bucket bag. For this price, for a contemporary brand, I think it is very good value for money. The whole bag is fully leather. It is light, it's functional and the design is really good. So I feel that paying $595 for this, it's pretty worth it. Now, I will go on to some tips of how to get a Mezzo Gavrel bag. As you know, Mezzo Gavrel bags are notoriously known for being difficult to get. All their launches on their website sell out within a day or two, as well as those launches on other websites like Netaporte, Bergdorf Goodman, Stephen Allen, and much more. I'm not sure if this is a marketing strategy of theirs or is it that they are truly popular but if you like their bags, I will try and give you some tips as to how to get them. First way, you can try and sign up to their mailing list to find out when their launches are. The launches on the official website are every 3-4 to four months but you really need to be on your computer with your credit card ready in Pacific time on the day itself at the very second because they sell out really fast. If you are looking at the other websites that I mentioned just now, 
their launches are not so consistent uh, and you really need to check back uh, quite regularly. My tip is to actually go on the PERS forum. On the PERS forum, there is a Mansur Gabriel sub forum and they have a thread that is for shopping intel. This shopping intel thread is frequently updated by the people in the community who go on these websites and they can give you the links to whenever there is restock for Mansur Gabriel items. So far, they have been really reliable and that's actually how I scored this bag. Would I recommend this bag? Yes, if you are someone with a minimal aesthetic and you like clean, sleek lines, then yes, this bag is for you. It is functional, there is a good design and for the price, you are getting bang for your buck. However, if you are someone who doesn't like wear and tear to show on your bags, then you can still get this bag, but I would recommend other leathers for this bag. They also make this bag in this uh, smooth calf, sorry, soft calf leather, as well as saffiano leather, which are of a grain as well, sorry, they have a grain to the leather, so it is more robust and will not show the scratches and wear so much. Let me show you some modeling shots of this bag on me. Okay, I am about 5'5 five, five, or 165 centimeters, and as you can see, I'm quite regular sized. Okay, this is how the bag looks on me. This is how I normally carry it with it behind me. If you like to carry the bag on the crook of your arm, this is how it will look. And in the hand, it hits right here. Okay, I've come to the end of this video. I hope you have enjoyed it and I have helped some of you in making a decision whether you want to buy this bag or not. If you have any questions, comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comments section below. I will leave the appropriate links in the description box and if you like uh, what's in my bag video for this bag, do let me know. Give me a thumbs up if you think this bag, sorry, if you think this video is good and I'll see you in my next video. Thank you for stopping by. Bye!